Hi, this is Mato. Welcome to my online chess lecture. In this video, we'll show you a game between Savieli Tartakova and Richard Reti. This very beautiful chess game was played in Vienna in 1919. So, what do you play against a super strong player like Reti? Maybe when you are in Vienna, Vienna game comes to mind. Or maybe something serious like Queen's Gambit. Tartakova polished his opening especially for Reti and played a surprise. Polish opening b4. Reti played e5. Bishop to b2. f6. If bishop takes on b4, then white takes more valuable pawn on e5. So we have f6. It is white to move. a3, defending the pawn, is played quite often. Tatakova played e4, move never seen before. And this move was given a name, the Tatakova Gambit. So we have a history in the making. The game continued. Bishop takes on b4. Bishop to c4. Knight to e7, f4, d5, e takes on d5, bishop to d6. Let's take it back. Reti didn't like this continuation. Knight takes on d5. He wanted his knight to defend g6 square. One line goes like this. f takes on e5, f takes on e5, queen to h5 check, and after king to f8, knight to f3. And next is castling kingside and white is better. Back to our game. Bishop to d6, f takes on e5, f takes on e5, queen to h5 check, knight to g6, knight to f3, knight to d7, and both players cast kingside. Well, it can be said that Reti did well against a big surprise. And it is now about equal. Only problem is, when you are finding good moves against an opening that you never seen before, it burns a lot of time on the clock. The game continued. Knight to c3, rook to f4. d3, knight to f6, attacking the queen. Queen to g5. And now, Reti was setting a trap. h6. Allowing white to take the knight on g6. Would you take the knight or not? Tatakova played the queen to g3. If queen takes on g6, then rook to g4. Bye bye, queen. Back to our game. Queen to g3. Black to move. e4. Unleashing the dark square bishop and sacrificing the pawn. There was another move. A more patient one, and that is Bishop to g4. We have e4. Knight takes on e4. Knight takes on e4. D takes on e4. Bishop to g4 now. Well, rook takes on e4 doesn't work because queen takes on g6 now. So we have bishop to g4, queen to e1. Tartakova is pushed back. This big surprise didn't work very well. Well, for a compensation... White is a pawn up. Bishop takes on f3. Rook takes on f3. Rook takes on f3. G takes on f3. And the pawn structure around the white king is damaged. Queen to g5 check. King to h1. It is black to move. I always ask my students. Which one of your pieces is not taking part in the game? And can you find the best square for that piece? Rook on a8 should be involved in the game. So rook to f8 comes to mind, doesn't it? Well, queen to h5 was played first. The threat is checkmate. And after queen to f2, we have rook to f8. Bishop to e2. Bishop to e5. Bishop takes on e5. Queen takes on e5. Rook to g1. Tatakova would love to exchange queens and try to make something out of his extra pawn, but it's not easy. Knight to f4. 
Bishop to f1, rook to f6, daring white to take the pawn on a7. Would you take the pawn on a7 or not? What would you do? Tartakova calculated very deeply and decided that it is okay to take the pawn on a7. Let's see if he was right. So, queen takes on a7 was played. Rook to b6. And the white queen is somewhat offside now. Maybe. What did Tatakova have in mind? What is the best move for white in this position? This is the key move. d6. And what is so special about this move? If c takes on d6, queen takes on b6. Of course, Reti would not do that. He played queen takes on d6. And now the reason for the pawn sacrifice is revealed. What is it? Why did pawn go from d5 to d6? Can you see why? This is why. Bishop to c4, check. King to h7, white to move. What is the follow-up? What would you do? This is the follow-up. Queen to b8. And black must be very careful. Let's play a random move. c5, then white plays. Queen to g8, check, mate. So we have knight to e6, blocking the diagonal. Bishop takes on e6. Queen takes on e6. Queen takes pawn on c7, winning the second pawn. And threatening queen takes on g7, check, mate. Queen to f6, defending. And threatening queen takes pawn on f3, check. And after rook goes to g2, rook to b1, check, mate. What would you do in this position if you had white pieces? Please pause and find the best move for white. What did you find? Did you notice that black queen is overworked? She is protecting the pawn on g7 and the rook on b6. Tartakova played in a slow motion. Rook takes pawn on g7 check. Queen takes rook. Queen takes on b6. And Reti resigned. For the entertainment purpose, I will show you just one line. Queen to f7. Forking two pawns. Queen to b3. Black doesn't want to exchange queens. Queen to d7. Threatening queen to d1. Check. Queen to d5. Queen to c7. e5. So black is losing in all variations. And we may as well try this one. Queen takes on c2, then queen to e4, check. Queen takes on e4, f takes on e4. And what now? King to g6, king to g2, king to g5, king to f3. Few more moves. h5, h4. If black king takes the pawn on h4, then he is out of the square. So then black must play king to g6 and then king to f4, and I guess we can stop here. That was quite a battle between the two legends. What do you think of this game? And that is all. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. I wish you good luck with your chess, and bye for now.